Hi, good morning. So, uh, I, I identify myself as a cyborg because I'm psychologically and biologically connected to cybernetics. I have a couple of implants in my arms that allow me to extend my perception beyond my traditional ones. Since 2013, my body is connected to online seismographs that allow me to perceive every earthquake anywhere in the planet in real time. I can perceive earthquakes from one in Richter scale through vibrations in my left arm. So now I'm here in Lithuania, but if there's an earthquake in Japan or in Greece, I will feel a vibration. So, I'm, so it connects me to, to the Earth and to other, other continents. And at the beginning, I had to get used to this new input to feel these seismic vibrations in my body. But after some time, I got used to it. And I felt that after these vibrations, this constant movement, when this motion became an emotion, it's when I felt cyborg. It's when I felt that my body and cybernetics have, have united and given me a new sense, what I call the seismic sense. We are used to see the planet in this way, but underneath of the lines of the continents, there are the tectonic plates. So we, we should be more, more, uh, more used to see this map because actually the, the tectonic plates are, are alive, they constantly move, they create and release tension, and they create earthquakes. Earthquakes are part of our nature, they have always existed, and this is, they are still a very mysterious phenomenon. In 2010, my childhood friend Neil Harbison and I uh, founded the Cyborg Foundation with three aims. Basically, to, to help humans to become cyborgs, to defend cyborg rights, and to promote cyborg art as a social and artistic movement. Um, yeah, um, cyborg comes from the union between cy cybernetics and organism. And it was created to define humans that modify themselves in order to survive in space. And there's, may, there's been many ways of using this word cyborg in, this, in, in all these years. So in the, in the endless list of definitions of how to define the word cyborg, we tried to, to nail it down with three different ways. So one could be a psychological cyborg. Psychological cyborg is the feeling of being a cyborg, the feeling of being united to technology. Probably most of you are already psychological, psychological cyborgs, because, for example, when our phones are running out of battery, you probably say, I'm running out of battery, instead of saying, my phone is running out of battery. One could be a bi biological cyborg, which is the physical union between cybernetics and an organism. And the last one would be a neurological cyborg, which is the modification of the mind through cybernetics. If we extend our senses, we'll modify our perception and our brain in long, in long term. Also with uh, some friends from London, we just founded the Cyborg Nest, which is a company that will, that will develop sensors and people will be able to buy them and then implant it. So we'll launch this Cyborg Nest this year and our first sense will be the north sense. So it will be an exosense sense that will be partly Im implanted in the body, and it will allow you to, to perceive the north. So you're welcome to, to check the web and put your name down to, to get this sense if, you, if you're inter interested in perceiving the north. So I'm, I'm a dancer, I'm a movement researcher, so since I've been studying dance, I've been interested in extending my sense of movement to, to explore and to experience movement in the deepest way. Um, I've been trying different ways to do that with technology. And one of my first projects was to, to feel speed. We humans can, uh, are not able to feel the speed of the people walking in front of us. So I wanted to, to be very precise with the, with the speed of the people walking in front of me. So I created uh, this kind of glove that I would point on people and then it would tell me the speed of the people walking in front of me. So it would tell me three per hour or five per hour when I pointed to the people. But this wasn't good enough for me because it was about perception, I, information. So I had to, to look at the, my glove. It wasn't, it, it just gave me information and I didn't want to, 
to have information, I wanted to feel the speed, not knowing the speed. So what we did with a, with a friend is transform this glove into an earrings. So I had a sensor of each ear, each ear, and when someone would walk from right to left, I would feel a vibration first on my right ear and then on my left ear. Depending on the interval of the vibration, I would know the speed of the people walking in front of me. So after wearing this for a while, I realized that people change their speed of walking depending on their context. So there's this unconscious common movement depending on where you are. You probably, if you go to London, unconsciously you will walk a bit faster than if you are in Rome. So I wanted to define each capital city of Europe depending of, of the speed of the citizens walking on it. So I wanted to, to define each city by the movement, by the speed of the people that they live there. So after this research, I realized that the fastest cities, the city I've been, it's London, and surprisingly, Stockholm. People also walk very fast. And the slowest uh, place I've been, it's the Vatican City. Never, no one goes fast there, no one runs. If someone is running in the Vatican City, it's probably something really bad has happened. So I also create a, a movement dictionary based on the capital cities in, in Europe. So now I can ask dancers to move like Rome or to move like Paris. And the movement quality of their, of their work is based on the movement of the people living in those cities. After experiencing the, the speed of the people I had in front of me, one day I turned around the earrings and, then, and this woke up the, the senses I, I had on, on, on my back. So I could feel presence behind my back. This, this opened up the whole, the, my whole perception of my surroundings. I think that all our senses are focused on what we have in front, but the back of our, of our body is very, very dead, very, very unsensitive. So this would, would awake me and will feel presence and space very differently. So I think this is useful, like, for example, if everyone could have these senses behind, they could feel presence behind their body, would probably would avoid these uncomfortable situations when you want to walk fast and someone is blocking your way because they don't feel that you are behind them. And after perceiving movement, depending of, of the people I had in front, of the people I had behind, I wanted to perceive a more universal movement, a movement that didn't depend on people or objects. So I imagined myself to be alone in the planet and how could I still perceive movement. Then I realized that well, when you think about dance, you think about movement, but not only humans move. There are many things that move and in many different ways. For example, the, the planet not only rotates by itself and around the sun, but it also shakes. It shakes every day, constantly, and most of the time we cannot perceive it. So I thought it would be amazing to transform this huge movement, this massive movement like an earthquake, to a whole body, to just one body. Um, so yeah, that, that was my aim, to transform an earthquake and to feel, to feel it in one body. Because earthquakes are like the natural dance of our planet. The, the movement of the tectonic plates can resemble the movement in a ballroom, like a dance. So earthquakes is like a dance that we have to learn. It's like a dance partner that we have to learn to dance with them. So I see that earthquakes are like, is like the heartbeat of our planet. I call it the earth beat. So now I feel like I have two heartbeats, my own and the earth, the earth that is beating in my arm in its own rhythm. This new sense can, has given me a, strong, a stronger connection to, to the planet. Now I feel much closer to it. Before, I knew that the planet was a living organism, but now I feel it. It's not just knowing, it's not feeling it. So I think, I think it's unfair that earthquakes are seen as the bad thing happening in our planet when we are the ones that haven't been able to adapt to this natural phenomena. Earthquakes have always existed, but we've been building those cities and we've been living it with ignoring that the Earth is alive and it's constantly moving. Also, uh, since I have this new sense, if there are 
if there's a big earthquake, I would wake up in the middle of the night, I would wake up. So Earth keeps interrupting my daily life. In cyborg art, I mean, in, in art, I see that um, artists no longer need uh, to use technology. We can become technology and extend our senses and then create new artwork from these new senses. It's what we see like cyborg art. Um, the artwork of a cyborg artist is the creation of a new sense. So my artwork is my seismic sense, but is an art that is happening inside my body, inside my mind. So in this case, the, the audience of this art is only me. I'm the only one experiencing this artwork. So in order to share my experience of this new sense, I create external artwork. One of my pieces, it's called Waiting for Earthquakes, where I stand still on a place and wait for an earthquake to take place. And when this happens, I move according to the intensity of the earthquake. So if there are no earthquakes during the performance, there will be no dance. This piece, it's based on real time. So it's a duet between the Earth and myself. Earth, in this case, acts as, as the choreographer of the piece. And I'm just revealing the, the natural rhythm of the Earth. I'm just the interpreter of the, of the, of the Earth. Also, I, I perform these in different places. I've been performing these in, on the streets of, of New York with a cube. So I just stand on, on the street and wait for an earthquake to take place. So people, when they have their busy lives, they can stop for a second and, and just look if the earth is moving or not. I also create a cyborg sculpture, which is a 3D replica of my arm that vibrates every time there's an earthquake in real time. So it has been exhibited in Barcelona for some months. So visitors could be able to, to touch the arm and feel an earthquake if anything was happening in that moment. And I feel that it's a cyborg sculpture because it's a sculpture connected to a living organism, which is the Earth. And I also transform this, this seismic activity of our planet with uh, uh, percussion, seismic percussion. So the rhythm, the rhythm of the drums are based on the rhythm of the tectonic plates. Um, so Earth, in this case, is the composer of the piece. And what I'm going to play later is um, this is the score that I did uh, of a performance in Mexico, where I researched all the earthquakes that have happened in Mexico for the last 50 years. I made a score of eight minutes. So you will be able to hear the, the, all, the, all the earthquakes that had taken place in, in Mexico in the last 50 years. Depending, you will see the, the years passing and then the, if there, there have been big earthquakes or not. So now that now that I'm a, that I'm a cyborg, I don't feel closer to robots or to machines. I actually feel closer to nature because I can feel my planet. I can feel closer to other animals that also feel um, earthquakes like I do. So I think we can learn a lot from other animal species. I think we got we can get inspired by them because if we look. If we have a look on the other animal senses, we'll see that what we think is natural, it's actually very natural. Because some, some animals can create light, some animals can fly, some animals can perceive ultraviolet or infrared, and even immortality already exists in nature, because there's a, jelly, a jellyfish that never dies. So, in, in this century, I think that rather than giving new senses to our machines, we can give new senses to ourselves. Rather than using technology, we can become technology. For example, if rather than giving the, se the sense of, uh, of presence, of knowing what's behind to our cars, we could, we could give this to ourselves and have a, dif a deeper relation with our surroundings. For example, um, Let's take light, for instance. Um, we are humans are unable to see, to see at night. We don't have the sense of night vision. So wouldn't be more logical to change ourselves than changing our environment? So if Edison would have created night vision instead of a light bulb, 
we will be able to see, to see the, the stars at night. So the, the pollution and the energy waste created by artificial light, it's damaging our planet. So it's daylight outside, we are, but we are inside this room with artificial light because we are blind and unable to see each other without it. So if Wright brothers would have invented wings instead of airplanes, we'd be the ones flying. So when we say that we are going from New York to Paris uh, by flying, it's not entirely true because it's the plane who's flying. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, the word cyborg, uh, it was created to, to make the, with the meaning of, it was created so the people, no, the word cyborg said that would enlarge the human experience. That, so I think it's in the, it's the natural nature of a human to enlarge our experience, to, to evolve, and to wonder about our planet. So with this exploration, my current project is to feel moonquakes, the seismic activity on the moon. So now I have an implant on my right arm ready to connect to the seismograph on the moon. So this will allow me to feel earthquakes, to, to be in the earth and in space at the same time. So I will feel earthquakes on my left arm and moonquakes on my right arm. So I think if we use internet as a sense, this will allow us to feel things that are happening uh, very far from our bodies. Because our senses don't need to be attached to our body anymore. If we use internet as a sense, we can enlarge our experience and feel things that are happening very far from us, things that are happening in the other side of the planet or things that are happening even in the space. If, if we use our senses to feel things that are in a space, to travel to space through our senses, maybe we can become sense turnouts. So I think that uh, we are the ones that need to make sure that the union between humans and technology does not alienate us from, from nature, instead bring us closer to it, to other animal species, to our planet, and to outer space. Thank you. Oh, wait. Yeah, now I'm going to play the earthquakes that had taken place in Mexico for the last 50 years. Mil novecientos sesenta y seis. Mil novecientos sesenta y siete. Mil novecientos sesenta y ocho. Mil novecientos sesenta y nueve. Mil novecientos setenta. Mil novecientos setenta y uno. Mil novecientos setenta y dos. Mil novecientos setenta y tres. setenta y cuatro mil novecientos setenta y cinco mil novecientos setenta y seis mil novecientos setenta y siete Mil novecientos setenta y ocho. Mil novecientos setenta y nueve. Mil novecientos ochenta. Mil 
1981. mil novecientos ochenta y dos mil novecientos ochenta y tres mil novecientos ochenta y cuatro mil novecientos ochenta y cinco 1986 1987 1988 1989 1990 1991 1992 1993 1994 1995 2006 2007 2008 2009 2010 2011 2012 2014 2015 2016 Thank you. Thank you. 